What's up team, uh, welcome to the vlog. The shock, Craig is uh, back with Radu, unbelievable. A lot of traveling recently and my back's been niggling and I don't know, well, like we do, we kind of know why. Basically just we've been sitting too much on a plane and sitting in cars and it's been driving me nuts and my back's just starting to just not be good. So Radu is teaching me how to do the core exercises actually perfectly rather than just doing core exercises. Cause he was like, show me the dead bug. And I was like, all right, I can do the dead bug. And then he's like, no, that's not how you do it properly. And I'm like, all right, let's get the vlog out. Some basics, basics. So the team can learn how to activate your cores to keep your back in check. Knowledge is power. The first one, first basic drill, uh, just to kind of remember and realize what you need to activate. It's um, imagine you're not an ice cube under your belly button, pull away from the ice cube. That's exactly it. You can see the spine going into a neutral position. Hold it there for five seconds. Now relax. Start again. Let's do this drill five times. You know the best thing about this exercise is when you're at home watching TV or you're just getting to bed? Yep. Or anything. It's you don't nice even need to, You're lying down, team. This is a good exercise. Lying down doing exercise is where you need to be. And so every, every, everyone, I mean, the way he showed me, everyone does the, the, the button yep. like him, so. Push it back into the floor and then. Okay, one thing you observe here, when he does the dead bug, what he's doing is bringing the knee. So normally the knee should be at 90 degree here, not moving towards him. Because what he does, he just uses his psoas, hip, hip flexor, to bring the back flat into the floor, not the core anymore. So what we're going to do, the trick in here, the most important bit, you bring your hands up, up in here. So what we need to do now, we, we need to take the legs away from you. So you got 90 degrees, you take them 10 degrees away from you. Okay, so you create a, a, a hundred degree angle here. Okay, just remember 10 degrees away from you. Okay, not to 90. Now from there, the big challenge is to keep your core. So for people that have like quite a weak core, this is just a challenge, just to keep the back flat into the floor. Now we have the band behind the lower back. I'm gonna start pulling on this side of the band. If that comes off, that means we're crap. Yeah. Okay, so what we need to do now, we need to just slowly the very basic of this exercise is just literally just touch the heel and bring it up. Okay, this is quite advanced for people that find that difficult. Obviously, Craig's got some. You just start with literally just drop straight back and up. That's it. But never bring the leg back towards you. That's the whole point. Now alternate. So do and hold there, back and back. It's burning, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little bit more difficult than the way you are doing it. So this is an actually true core exercise if you want to hit the core properly and not actually get your hip flexors involved. So it's isolating your transversus abdominis quite well. In between, if you think about your, the distance of your humerus, how, how big it is, you can squeeze that in. Well, make sure you don't tip too much. Just there, there, there. That's where the challenge is. To stay nice and square. It's challenging on the glutes. I know. I feel like I could, like. But what? That's, see what 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 you do now. You do the you, you make a little bit of a connection in between your medial glute, your glute, and your uh, your gluteus maximus and the the core, the transversus abdominis. So that's what you do, and actually the obliques as well, because that's gonna get your obliques, core, and glutes working all at the same time. Yep. CrossFit, loads of complex movements. You want your whole body to be working in unison, not your core and then your back and then your glutes. Exactly. That was much harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm like sweating. You heard all the cracks. Oh. We don't need to be too brutal about it. If you've been following my Instagram, always plug. <laughs> You'll see that recently I've been doing some air bike conditioning. It's just because of my back, as you saw with Radu. Like, I don't know what's up with it. Just after the way back from Hawaii, I came back, I was just warming up. And I was like, ooh, I don't feel right. And then it's progressively got worse. So I'm trying to like, just leave it. So I'm leaving it for a bit. But still trying to get that conditioning in. For me, honestly, the air bike is like the one thing that you can build mental grit on. It's like one of those ones where you always want to slow down and it's always hurting, but you just got to keep pushing. That one was one of those workouts. Oh. Three, powerful, bigger, higher, taller, bigger jumps. Nice.
what are we doing? We're jumping around. We're getting Jazz to jump around. So this morning, the thing is with Jazz, like when she does a snatch, like she's now moving pretty well in the snatch, like we've been doing CrossFit for a couple of years. And like when I watch Jazz snatch, it frustrates me because she's just not explosive through the movement. What we're doing here this morning is power snatches, getting that explosion off the floor. But instead of just doing power snatches, before we do the power snatches, we're just doing three explosive jumps, starting in a, in a snatch position where instead of just jumping like we are here, you're starting down in that nice snatch position and using the legs, exploding up, doing three big jumps. What that does is kind of get your body in a state of readiness to explode. So you're amping up the body, those fast twitch muscle fibers, jumping as high as you can, getting that service so getting that central nervous system firing and then taking a couple of breaths, walking up to the bar, taking that amped up energy, that central nervous system explosion and transferring it into a, into a snatch and trying to be fast and explosive. So we're just trying to get Jazz's speed up. Like, it's just the technique that we've been using recently and Jazz's, Jazz's snatch is going. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. It's like something that, I don't know, like I'm not a weightlifting coach, so I don't know if weightlifting coaches do this. If any weightlifting coaches out there do this, please do back me up on this down below. But uh, it's been working for us. So take it into your training if you feel like you're not fast with the bar and you need to amp up that little bit of speed. Mark my words, Jazz is going to snatch 120. It's pitch black that Mark my words, Jazz is going to snatch 120 pounds soon. <laughs> you already snatched that, I think. I do realize that I look like I've just escaped from prison. I'm chilling, all right, team? Like, we're just, this is, this is chill wear. But there's, a, there's something that I've been doing after every workout that um, I think you guys can benefit from, from Wad Science. So basically, if you, if you follow their posts for like the last two or three weeks, I've been doing, I've been doing this. I've been eating this when I finish training because their science said so. So basically, they put a load of graphs up with uh, different lines on it and everything and did like a nice explanation and whatever, yeah. Can't wait till we have a nice- So apparently, like after you train, GLUT4 pathways open up and remain active for one or two hours. Basically, I don't know what a GLUT4 pathway is, but the whole article basically came down to this. If you want to recover optimally and be ready quickly for the next session, six to 24 hours later, consume 40 to 80 grams of carbs, depending on body weight immediately after the workout. Science. Science. So after every workout, we just get home, I'll have a bagel. A banana with some honey. Bacon has 42 grams of carbs. Banana, don't know how many grams of carbs, but I'm gonna take a guess at 31. Search large banana into Google. Don't do that, don't do that. Uh, I'm not even kidding. Have 31 grams. Carbohydrates, you have got to be kidding me. I don't- You must have subconsciously known that from before. I've never searched how many carbs are in a big banana, but now I have and it's 31 grams. So that's actually 70, and then you add some of this because this makes it taste great. It's like 80 grams of carbs. Helps you get ready for the session later in the day, or if you are only training once. Do you want a bread knife? Uh, they're all in the wash. I got this. Basically, post-workout recovery, Get something in within the first hour of finishing training. Wouldn't make a cooking show, would I? Toast the bagel, cut up the banana onto it, add the honey around. I don't know if it's actually made any difference, but it's really nice to have after every training session. And uh, I thought I'd share it with you guys. So then if you do tag me on Instagram, always plug. Then go follow Jazz on Instagram. Always plug. Yeah. <laughs> if you want some slightly uh, less fitness fitness. <laughs> we, will, we will see it. We're gonna chill and then we're actually gonna do another session today. We're gonna to go do bodybuilding, but we're gonna um, we're gonna make that a different video. First time back bodybuilding in a while. Oh my word. Jazz put a funny thing on Instagram yesterday. It's true. <laughs> Been training four years. <laughs> I just like food, okay? And on that note, we're going to leave you today, team. I hope you did enjoy today's video. I know it's kind of not really been much of a vlog. It's more been factual, which is Discovery Channel. Watch out. Have you seen that guy's house? Yeah, it's on YouTube now. If you want to watch it, it's like 280 million. Or is it 2.8 billion? It's, it's a lot of money. But anyway, team, thanks for watching today. If you did enjoy it, as always, smash that like button. Recommend us to friends until they actually get annoyed of you recommending and they watch. <laughs> yeah. But not that bad. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.
next one. Yeah. Au revoir. Au revoir. Oh, I haven't even showed him the bagel yet. Watch this. I went a bit premature on ejecting the bagel. Look at that, honey. Honey. And this is a this is a life hack. So instead of having one bagel, you basically just chop up the banana onto two and you eat them two separate bits so then it feels like you're having two bagels instead of one. Don't say you don't learn stuff on these videos. If my name was my dad's name, Jeff, then I could call myself Chef Jeff or Sh Jeff Ritchie, but I can't, I'm Craig. Stop it, talking with your mouth off. Your name is also not Jeff, so that's completely pointless. My name's Jeff. Okay.